This video will show you how to install and program a multi-drive system on a sliding patio door. Unboxing. You will receive two boxes with items needed to install your multi-drive system. The first box is a long, rectangular shaped box. This box contains the mounting base and cover for your multi-drive system. The second box is a short, rectangular shaped box. This box contains the electrical and mechanical components for the multi-drive system. In this box, you will find one locking motor, one PCB with housing, one power supply, one return with tensioner, one belt, three cord channels, two white end caps and two black end caps, shim packet, one tool packet with two crescent wrenches, one small flathead screwdriver, and one Allen wrench, one accessories packet with short door bracket, tall door bracket, two cover clips, and assorted screws, one status panel with cable, two wireless push buttons, two four button remote controls, one Wi-Fi or Bluetooth module, and one set of safety beams. Additional sensors may be purchased and added onto your system at any time. Installation. To begin, measure your door's opening from inside jam to inside jam. This will be the distance the cover for the multi-drive system will run. Use the measurements taken to measure and mark the cover and base at the lengths needed for your door. You will want to subtract three-fourths of an inch from your measurement to allow room for the end caps to be inserted on the ends of the base. You can perform these cuts using a hacksaw or power saw. Once your base and cover have been cut, you will want to pre-drill your mounting holes in the base of the multi-drive system. If you are mounting the system to a header above the door, drill holes through the bottom of the base. If you are performing a flush mount above the door, drill holes through the L part of the base. To start, measure one inch in from the left end of the base and drill your first hole. Then, measure three inches over and drill six additional holes measuring three inches apart. Once completed, perform the same task starting from the right end of the base. After completing the pre-drilled holes on the right side, you will want to add additional holes measuring 18 inches apart, beginning from the last pre-drilled hole on either end of the base. If mounting into drywall or block, use the pre-drilled holes on the base to mark the spots in your mounting area to pre-drill and place the appropriate anchors. Next. Place the multi-drive base in front of the door you will be automating with the L side facing up and closest to you. This will allow you to get the components aligned easily for your door's application. The configuration of the components can be arranged in different positions to meet your door's needs. To begin, identify which side of the door system the power source is located. This will determine on what side of the base your components will be placed. If the power is located to the left, then you will install your electrical components on the left side of the base. If located to the right, then you will install these components on the right side of the base. In this video, we will be installing the components on the left side of the base in the optimal positions. Start by loosening the nuts and screws on the motor, PCB housing, power supply, return with tensioner, and cover clips. Once loosened, slide your motor into the rail system with a wheel facing the L part of the base. Next, slide your PCB housing into the rail system with the front facing away from the L part of the base. Next, slide the power supply into the rail system, leaving a small gap between the PCB housing and power supply to allow cable connections. There should be a minimum of one inch between the end of the power supply and the end of the base. Note, you may have to adjust the position of the power supply to accommodate feeding the power cord through the end cap. Next, slide the return with tensioner into the rail system. 
Position the return with tensioner one inch from the end of the base to allow for the end cap to be installed. Once all of the components have been inserted into the base's rail system, verify that there is enough distance between the motor's wheel and return's wheel and close, checking to make sure there is enough area to mount the door bracket for a full opening. If placement of components is complete, use the included crescent wrench and allen wrench to tighten down the nuts and screws, securing the components into the rail system. You may have to reposition the components in the rail system to allow the doors to fully open. Your multi-drive system is now ready to be mounted above the door. Once you have mounted the base of your multi-drive system above your door, it is time to attach the belt. Begin by feeding the belt up and over the wheel of the motor, spinning the wheel to help feed the belt through the top of the wheel. Pull the belt through and around the return with tensioner. Bring the end of the belt that you have fed around both wheels to the body of the remaining part of the belt. Pull tight and identify where to cut the belt to allow a proper connection. It is recommended to count one notch longer than the point you have identified to cut. This will leave room for the connection of the belt inside of the door bracket. Locate the short door bracket and remove the two Allen screws to open. Connect the two ends of the belt by inserting them into the short door bracket, evenly splitting the teeth area between the two ends. Once belt ends are connected in teeth housing, reconnect the back part of the bracket using the two Allen screws. Next, locate the place on the lead active panel to attach the short door bracket. Attach using the appropriate screws based on the material type the panel's frame is made. Using the return with tensioner, remove slack from the belt. To do this, use the included crescent wrenches to loosen the nut from the tensioner's bolt, turn the bolt in a clockwise direction. This will cause the tensioner to tighten the belt. Once the bracket has been secured to the panel, continue to tighten the belt until taut and tighten the nut on the tensioner's bolt. Note, there may be a gap preventing the bracket from being properly attached to the door. In this case, you can use the provided shim packet to offset the gap between the belt and the panel. It is now time to connect the cables on the multi-drive system. Locate the PCB housing. On the left side, there are four ports to choose from, each labeled as follows. Motor, power, battery, and lock. Begin by connecting the motor cable, which is the largest of the connections coming out of the motor. Then, connect the power cable coming from the power supply. Next, connect the lock cable, which is a smaller cable coming out of the motor. The port labeled battery is used when the lithium backup battery is added to the multi-drive system. Note, verify that the cables have been inserted in their proper ports. Inserting a cable into an improper port can cause the system to malfunction or could cause damage to the system. Before turning the system on, you will need to ensure the dip switches are in the proper positions. To flip the dip switches on or off, Use the included small flathead screwdriver or another small tool. If your door opens from the right to the left, you will want dip switch number one, direction and learn, in the off position, which is facing away from the door. If your door opens from the left to the right, you will want dip switch number one in the on position, which is facing towards the door. If your door requires more than 12 pounds of force to open to the max opening width, then you will need to flip dip switch number seven, extra power, to the on position. Note, more information on the dip switch settings can be viewed later in this video. You are now ready to power on the multi-drive system. Begin by plugging the power cord into a nearby standard 110 outlet. Note, you may choose to have a power source relocated to an area above the door that is more convenient for the installation of the multi-drive. It is highly recommended to hire a licensed electrician to perform this process. The multi-drive can also be hardwired by a licensed electrician. Once the multi-drive system is connected to the power source, a blue light will illuminate on the power pack, indicating the system is receiving power. 
Next, assure that your door is closed and then toggle the power on using the red paddle switch on the left side of the PCB housing. The lights on the front of the housing should briefly flash and the door should slightly move in the closing direction. This is normal. The system is confirming it is in the closed position. Note, if the door begins to open, dip switch number one is in the wrong position. Turn the power off, close the door, flip dip switch number one to the opposite direction, and turn the power back to on. Now that the system is powered on and the doors are closed, you are ready to program the opening distances that your multi-drive will open to. First, assure that the multi-drive system is in either green mode or red mode. If the system is in blue mode or orange mode, use the mode button, which is located next to the mode indicator lights and labeled as an asterisk to change the mode. Each press will cause the system to advance into the next mode. Press the mode button until the system advances into the green or red mode. Next, program the normal open distance. This is the distance that the doors will travel in green and red modes, as well as the opening distance for people when the system is in orange mode. Note, more information on the mode settings can be viewed later in this video. To program, Toggle dip switch number one by flipping it to the opposite of its current position and immediately returning the switch back to its previous position. Failure to return the switch to its previous position will cause the system to program in the reverse direction. Once the programming has been initiated, the doors will begin to move open slowly. If automating only a single panel, you may let the door open fully without interaction as the door jam or stops will provide the resistance to identify to the system with max open position. If you're programming a door system with multiple panels that move, you will need to physically stop the door by using both hands and applying resistance to the door panel in the opposite direction that it is opening. This can be done at any opening size wider than 10 inches. Once the maximum position has been determined during programming, the system will complete the rest of the learning on its own. After the door finds its maximum open position, it will begin to close back slowly in order to confirm its fully closed position, followed by a quick, but not full, opening to determine the force required to open and close your door. The door will go back to its closed position and the programming process will be complete. To test the system, Press the top button on the right side of the PCB housing labeled Inside Sensor. The door should open quickly to the program distance and then automatically close back. The door is now ready to be operated in green and red modes. The next distance to program is for the blue mode, also known as Stay Open Mode and Stack Mode. This mode will allow the system to open the door up to a full open and remain open. Change the mode to the blue mode to program the distance. The door may open when placing the system in this mode. This is a normal reaction. To program the blue mode, perform the same process using dip switch number one by toggling it in the opposite direction and returning it to its previous position. If the doors are open when initiating the programming mode, the doors will close before beginning its programming cycle. There is no need to interact with the doors once the programming begins. Just as with the normal distance programming, the doors will open slowly and close slowly. Once the doors are closed, the blue mode distance will be programmed. The third and final distance to program is the PET distance. The PET distance can only be opened in PET mode, indicated by the orange light for orange mode, and is only needed if you plan on utilizing the multi-drive system with a PET sensor for activation. If you do not have a PET, this mode does not need to be programmed. Pet mode can be programmed while the multi-drive system is in either green or red modes. To initiate the programming process, toggle dip switch number three, labeled Pet Learn, to the on position and immediately back to the off position. Do not leave the switch in the on position. Once initiated, the door will begin to open slowly. Physically stop the door panel at the maximum distance that you would like for it to open for your pet by using both hands and applying resistance at the position you want the panel to open to. The door will then slowly close back and now the pet distance is programmed. To test this mode, 
press the third button down on the right side of the PCB housing labeled Pet Sensor. This will open the door to the pet distance and automatically close back. Note, the orange mode will only become available once the pet distance has been programmed. Note, pet sensors are an add-on to the multi-drive systems and are not included as a standard option. Now that the three door widths have been programmed, it is time to program and connect your controls and sensors to the multi-drive system. Locate the two wireless wall buttons included in the multi-drive box. On the PCB housing, locate the button labeled Sensor Learn, then press and release it. A red light will illuminate and remain on. With one of the push buttons, press and release it. The red light will flash three times on the PCB housing. Press the same push button a second time, and the red light should then disappear. The push button is now programmed into the multi-drive system. Press the wall button once more, and you should see a green light flash on the right side of the PCB housing, indicating the signal was received from the push button. Repeat the same process with the second push button. After you have programmed the wireless wall buttons, select the channel you would like each one to activate through. Inside sensor, secure. Outside sensor, unsecure. Stacker, blue mode. To select the channel, Open the button using the included flathead screwdriver and unscrewing the set screw at the bottom. Lift the top of the button off and locate the small black channel selector. Use the screwdriver to slide the switch up and down to the label of the channel you wish to use. Reattach the cover. Next, locate the two four button remotes. Remove the remotes from their boxes. Repeat the same process with the four button remotes that was performed with the wireless wall buttons using the sensor learn button. Note, the wall buttons and remotes are typically pre-programmed into the multi-drive system when they arrive in the box. If you begin the pairing process and see the red light go out after the first press of a wireless device, it means the device has already been paired with the system. The multi-drive system can function in two different manners, timeout, or toggle. Located on the PCB housing is a wheel labeled time out or delay. This will allow you to set the way the system will function. For time out functionality, spin the wheel to set the amount of time the door will remain open before automatically closing. This can be adjusted from 0 to 20 seconds. For toggle functionality, spin the wheel all the way to maximum delay. This will send the multi-drive system into toggle mode. In this mode, you can press a button to open the door and it will remain open until you press a button to close the door. Next, locate the status panel. Connect the panel by plugging the status panel cable that was previously run into the back of the status panel. Connect the other end into the eight pin port located on the top right side of the PCB housing. The status panel's light should now be illuminated and mimicking the lights on the PCB housing indicating the system's current mode. Once connected, mount the status panel in the area of your choosing. Lastly, if you have purchased additional sensors or controls, now is the time to connect and program them into the multi-drive system. Note, if your multi-drive system comes with a Wi-Fi module or Bluetooth module, refer to the section of the video at the end on how to connect. Now that you have programmed the system and programmed your controls, it is time to finish up. Begin by using the included cord channels to help keep any cables and wires up and out of the way of the belt. Next, collect and bundle up the wires surrounding the PCB housing, motor, and power supply and conceal them to prevent interference with the belt and the motor. Cable ties are the best way to contain these together. Before the final step of attaching the cover over the multi-drive system, mount your sensors and controls. Then, test them to assure that your system is receiving communication from these devices and reacting properly to them and are assigned to the correct channels. For your final step, attach the multi-drive cover. The cover has a channel that runs the length of the backside that will clip into the cover clips and end caps. You have now completed the installation of the multi-drive system. Dip switches. This part of the video details the dip switch's function and use on the multi-drive system. When using a dip switch, it is either in the off position, which is facing away from the door, 
or in the on position, which is facing towards the door. Dip switch number one, direction learn. This dip switch performs two different functions. Direction. The system can be used on either a right-handed or a left-handed door. If the door opens from right to left, dip switch number one should be in the off position. If the door opens from the left to the right, dip switch number one should be in the on position. Learn. Dip switch number one is also used to initiate the programming sequence to learn the opening distance for the green, red, and blue modes. To program green mode and red mode, place the system into either the green or red mode using the mode selector. Then, toggle dip switch number one back and forth, going from its current position to the opposite position and immediately back to its previous position. This will initiate the programming sequence. Programming the door in green or red modes will program both modes at the same time. To program blue mode, place the system into blue mode and perform the same toggle action used to program green mode and red mode. Dip switch number two, slam shut. This dip switch will engage slam shut mode when flipped to the on position. Slam shut provides extra power at the closing of the door panel to help engage the panel fully into the jam when there are tight weather seals that may prevent the normal operation from a full close. Dip switch number three, pet mode program. This dip switch is used to initiate the programming sequence for the pet mode distance. To program pet mode, toggle dip switch number three back and forth, moving the switch to the on position and back to the off position. This will initiate the programming sequence. The door will open slowly. Stop the door by applying resistance using both hands at the maximum opening width that you would like for your door to open for your pets. The door will close back and is now programmed for pet use. Dip switch number four, deactivate outside sensor in pet mode. When flipped to the on position, this dip switch will prevent any sensors programmed to the outside sensor, unsecure channel, to be used while the system is in pet mode, orange mode. Dip switch number five, 75% power. When flipped to the on position, this dip switch will reduce the motor power by 25% and operate it at 75% of its capacity. This function is useful when the system is applied to doors that are very light and require less force to move. Dip switch number six, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth app. When flipped to the on position, this dip switch will allow the system to provide communication with the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules to allow control of the system from the AutoSlide app. You will not be able to manually program the system using the dip switches if dip switch number six is in the on position. Dip switch number seven, heavy door. When flipped to the on position, this dip switch will provide extra power to the system to enable it to move heavy doors and multi-panel doors. Dip switch number eight, beep. When flipped to the on position, this dip switch will cause the system to make an audible beep when the door begins to open and when the door begins to close. Modes. The multi-drive system has four different modes that it can be used in. Green mode, unsecured mode. While in green mode, the multi-drive will remain unlocked and the sensors programmed to inside sensor and outside sensor channels will activate the door to open. The door can also be used in a power assist function. By simply pulling on the door to open, the system will detect the movement of the door and take over the opening operation for you. Blue mode, stack mode and stay open mode. When the multi-drive system is placed in blue mode, the doors will begin to open automatically to their fully open position. The doors will remain open until either the system is placed into another mode, green, red, or orange, or it is activated to closed by a sensor or controller programmed to the stack channel. The system will lock the doors when they are closed in blue mode. The system can be operated in a toggle type function, push to open and push to close, while in blue mode using the sensors programmed to the stack channel. The doors may also be stopped and restarted during opening or closing using the sensors program to the stack channel. Red mode, secure mode. While in red mode, the multi-drive system will lock the doors when they are closed. Only the sensors program to the inside sensor channel, secure channel, will activate the system to open the doors. All sensors program to the outside sensor channel will be deactivated. Orange mode, pet mode. 
The orange mode allows the use of sensors and controls programmed to the pet sensor channel to activate the doors to open to the program pet distance. You may also use sensors and controls programmed to the inside sensor channel to open to the normal distance set for people while in orange mode. Pet sensors can only be used in orange mode and will not work in other modes. Thank you for purchasing a multi-drive system. Please visit us online at autoslide.com for more information.